always a big week, Josh, to show it in. Yeah. Uh, you guys are hoping that he's still got plenty to play for, whether you're eligible for finals or not. Yeah, look, I, you know, it's interesting when you talk sort of showdown week um, and history shows and having been involved in, in quite a few showdowns myself, it's, it's a game, it doesn't matter previous weeks, previous week, um, form as far as win-loss goes, they're, you know, they're big games, big occasions, big for the state, big for the supporters, um, you know, and it's, it's a big game for both clubs, so plenty of excitement building around Saturday. Do you think the players have long memories of the way the last one finished? Uh, oh, look, as far as the players are concerned, no doubt that would be, I guess they'd give it a fleeting sort of thought uh, as far as how at the end and I guess the excitement around Port Adelaide, their camp winning and obviously us on the, the losing end. Um, but I wouldn't, wouldn't imagine it be more than a fleeting thought. Yeah. Don't need any extra motivation then, what you're saying? No, no, absolutely, no. No, I think the game is big enough itself that you get enough motivation out of out of that to, to perform. So chance to get a few back this week, maybe Brody, yeah. Douglas, um, Duday. Duday, yep, yeah. So Brody again performed pretty well at Sanford level, or very well at Sanford level. Um, Dougie, we're hoping he's going to be available as well. Tommy Duday will definitely be available. Um, is there anyone else? How's Paul? Paul Seisman. Yeah. Um, so he had, I think he had scans, and it's a slight hamstring strain. So um, he's obviously been assessed by the, the medical staff. Um, he wouldn't be available this week, but fingers crossed it's only one. Camel John. Again, good, good performance in the Sanford, very good. Um, almost a cut above the, the rest on, on Saturday at Prospect Oval. Um, so yeah, he's another player that will definitely come into contention for selection. Where do you, where do you think the last, I mean, obviously the Melbourne game leading in, how do you adjust from such a flattening Lost to then pick yourself up for the game that stopped the state. Well, I guess it goes back to my original original comment about about the showdowns. There, you know, the build up, both from a, a supporter's perspective and also the club and players' perspective. It's there's a lot of hype around it. You're playing the the crosstown rivals. So, as I said, it, it, the previous week form, in my opinion, doesn't really have too much of a bearing as far as players' ability to get up for the game. So, as I said, it's a big game in itself, so I'm, I'm sure there'll be you know, no lacking in motivation to, to prepare themselves for Saturday afternoon. Is it natural, though, to, to assume that, you know, given what did happen, could affect the players, given, I mean... You, you what did happen as far as... In terms as of losing the, with the finals hopes on the line, so to speak, do you think that would ever affect the players going into a showdown? Uh, no, I don't, no I, honestly, I don't. No, no, and as I said, having played in and probably been in similar situations, um, it, well, personally, it didn't affect me, so I, I couldn't imagine it would affect the players, no. As far as lack of motivation or, um, you know, what are we playing for, those questions definitely wouldn't be asked. Dave McKay, I think, was the other one. Oh, yes, oh, David McKay. Yeah, 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 he'd be around the mark as well. Um, Mitch McGovern, I think, was a bit sore, went up with maybe a stinger or something. He got a bit of a stinger, but um, uh, from all reports, he's, he's fine. He's pulled up pretty well post-game. So it should be OK? Yeah. Where do you think your biggest yeah. concern is at the moment, Josh, forward, right? Look, oh, you know, it's interesting when if you looked at our season as a whole and, and if you break them up into individual games, probably a, a common theme, a trend that we've been seeing is just lapses within quarters and lapses within games that have, that have been costly for us. Um, you know, obviously on the weekend against Melbourne, I thought we came, we came out and started really well as far as our pressure and intent around the footy. Um, you know, possibly you could argue a case that, you know, possibly we could have been further in front at quarter time. Um, but as I said, those sort of lapses in concentration where we give the opposition a window, as we did against Melbourne in that third quarter, and to their credit, they, you know, they ramped it up um, and they kicked five, I think it was five goals in, in probably ten minutes and blew the game wide open. And then we were chasing our tail. And once again, to our guys' credit, they fought back in the, uh, sorry, in the last quarter, potentially could have stolen the game, but not to be. So I guess to answer your question, it's is it forwards, backs, mids? It's, it's probably a whole sort of team where focus where we, we just, again, whether it's a concentration thing, thing a, a work rate thing, we just, you know, open that window for the opposition that, that they've, you know, taken consistently throughout the year and put ourselves under pressure. So we need to address that, absolutely. At the end of uh, last showdown, Ken Hinckley was in the box doing 0 one one zero. Was it a chance to square the ledger this week? As far as the showdown goes? No, yeah. oh, look, we don't. To be brutally honest with you, mate, we don't look at it like that. Um, you know, obviously, 
in the context of a season, it's just another game, um, albeit a showdown. And in the end, we can control what we can, and that's about preparing the best we possibly can to get the result we want. So it's not a matter of getting one back or looking at the ledger, us v Port Adelaide. It's it's more holistic as far as the, the entire season concern that we we generally focus on. There's a nice little, nice little milestone for Bryce Gibbs coming up his 250th game, I think it is, that he's playing oh, playing on, on Sunday. Okay. Yep. Um, talk about his. He's had a really good season in his first year here at the club, but obviously played a little bit forward in recent weeks. Yep. What's Sort of the situation with that move there? Um, well, if you looked at the, I guess, the dynamic of our, our mid group and the mix of our mid group, Riley Lights has been given a few jobs in recent weeks. Obviously, had Selwood against, um, against Geelong, had Beams last week, um, had the job on Oliver on Saturday night against Melbourne. So, in the end, if another bloke goes in there, one sort of gets shuffled, and I guess that's sort of just the, the nature of, of how it's unfolded in recent weeks. Um, but Bryce has shown, as you said, he's played 250 games. He's been a wonderful player for both Carlton and he showed that he can obviously make an impact here at Adelaide as well. Um, but very flexible as well. And those types of players are you know, invaluable in, in footy clubs that can play back. He can play also mid, which he's played the majority of his career and can also go forward and create, a, I guess, a few headaches and uncertainties for for opposition defenders. What's really impressive with him this year coming across the club? Uh, I think, it, look, his knowledge of the game, um, you know, and to play 250 games, you, you probably need to know a bit about the game and have a good understanding of the game, which he does. Um, so he brings a lot of experience. So that's, I mean, I guess that's been one of the standout features of him coming to the footy club. I know it's late in the year, a lot of blokes probably are playing sore, but Daniel Tully with that crack in his leg, is there any danger or risk playing him or is he OK? Look, I, as far as I know, Tom, he's, He's good to go, and you know you look at medical staffs at any club; they're not going to take any risk at all. So no, he's fine. He's fine. What is the belief within the four walls of the club? Is it still a glimmer of hope that you can, you can make it? Yeah, well, I, I guess if you looked at once again the context of the season and where we're sitting currently, um, I guess mathematically we can still make it. We've got to win all four games. So while that's there, absolutely, it's business as usual, um, and. You know, we've just come out of our post-match re review as far as the coaching group's concerned um, and the way that, I guess, the players are addressed and our focus going to the game, it's business as usual. So, I guess, um, once again, it goes back and it sounds a bit boring, but we control can control what we can control and that's preparing to our absolute maximum to give us the best chance to win on Saturday and that's what we'll be doing. Is there something Last slightly sweet about being able to dent Port Adelaide's top four or final subs? Oh, look, I, I guess I sort of understand the, the angle of that question and, um, and I guess where you want to sort of take that. But, but, but to be brutally honest with you, you know, that, that's, not, that's not on the agenda. Um, you know, it's never, never talked about, even as a player, it was never talked about. It was about going out, preparing to win and beat the Crosstown rival, absolutely. But it was, I guess I said, it's never, it's never about sort of denting their, their season. It's about, again, controlling what we can. Josh, you get to this stage of the season, I don't know if you specifically are involved in the list management side of things, but you're looking at, at that list. But as a coaching group, you believe that there's not need for much change, you just need to get things right, like pre-season and that, that perhaps didn't happen this year? Um, look, I mean, that's, that's an interesting, interesting question. While the season's still in full swing, I haven't given, obviously, that a lot of thought. Um, I guess the only way to answer that is we'll sort of talk about that post-season and and address that as a coaching group and a, and a list management group. So just one more, Josh. Um, I think August one is the date that assistant coaches are told whether they'll be, you know, required by their clubs next season. Does that make it from a, I suppose, a league-wide sort of situation? Does that make it a little bit of an awkward situation at clubs if, if that's in, well with that sort of process? Um, oh, well, I guess the way I, I'm still contracted, so yeah. uh, I guess from my point of view, it doesn't sort of affect me, but. I suppose like you guys, if you're coming out of contract and you're looking for another one and you haven't been offered one, then it probably does create a bit of... I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Okay. Can't answer here. Yeah.